Uh, thank you for the introduction. As David mentioned, I'm a business executive. And even though women have ascended to high leadership positions in many fields, including business, law, and medicine, there is still a lack of equal representation in politics. And it is my goal to change that. I am joined here by an elite group of young legislators who make up the GOPAC Emerging Leaders, of which is uh, how I'm privileged to speak to you today. Of the 22 members of the 2015 Emerging Leaders class, only six are women. In state and national legislatures, women hold only a small percentage of seats, making up about one-fourth of all state legislators nationwide, yet we're slightly more than half the population. We as the Republican electorate play an important role in bringing about parity and closing the gender gap in American politics, and not just for women, but Republican women. Young women do have strong role models from which to learn. A perfect example is our own Governor Mary Fallon. <laughs> Governor Fallon worked in the private sector and was frustrated by the red tape and regulations businesses had to endure, and she wanted to change it. As a freshman female minority member of the legislature, she worked across party lines and managed to pass the state's first anti-stalking legislation and only the second in the entire country. She went on to be the first women lieutenant governor for the state of Oklahoma, only the second female uh, elected to Congress from Oklahoma, and the first female governor of the state of Oklahoma. <laughs> Then there's a local young woman who is standing up for change in Stevens County, Oklahoma. At the age of 22, Hope Sutterfield is believed to be the youngest county GOP chair currently serving in all 77 counties in the state. <laughs> About seven years ago, Sutterfield visited DC with her family. And at just 13, she decided she would become the change she wanted to see in the world. Over the last few years, Sutterfield has been involved in campaigns in Stevens County and says even at that level, she can make a difference. These are just two examples of strong women in leadership. There are others, but there should be more. A primary reason there are far fewer women in elected office than men is because fewer women put themselves forward as candidates. Studies show that factors inhibiting women from running for office include feeling uh, unqualified to serve, not understanding the process of running, and needing to be asked repeatedly to run before they seriously consider launching a campaign. Instead of working behind the scenes, women need to come out in front and lead. <laughs> We need to start changing that dynamic at a young age by encouraging our daughters and the other young women to run for office. Political involvement can start by running for student government in high school or in college. In order for young women to be, aspire to be political leaders, they need to see women who are successfully elected officials. Take your daughters with you to town hall meetings. Visit the Capitol and talk to legislators who represent you and any other opportunity that they can watch women leaders in action. We need organizations like the Republican Federation of Women to seek, <laughs> to seek out young women and bring them up in the party, not just to serve on the campaigns of others, but to look towards leadership positions in their communities, then onto the House and the Senate on local and even national levels. Recruitment and encouragement can lead many who thought otherwise would have never considered running for office to emerge as candidates, and I am the perfect example of that. In a study by the School of Public Affairs at American University, it was found this type of encouragement to serve is one of the strongest predictors of political ambition. But they also found that women were less likely than men to receive that support. That can change with us, all of us, beginning today. I have just five minutes to speak to you, not nearly enough time. This is the only the beginning of a conversation on how to change the political ambition of Republican women. 
It is a start in how we, as conservatives, men and women, can make our party the one in which women are bold and strong and hold leadership positions. I am proud to live in this prosperous and free country. I am proud to represent the great state of Oklahoma. I look forward to the day when more elected officials, female elected officials, are standing next to me on this stage. If the party does not mirror our population, the Republican Party runs the risk of being viewed as excluding. The task of increasing female representation in politics is within reach. Let us work together to achieve that.